ladies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's launch of the joint work program of the Technology Mechanism. The Technology Mechanism was established in 2010, comprised of a policy arm, the Technology Executive Committee, and an implementation arm, the Climate Technology Center for Work. We are very honored to welcome distinguished leaders who are here to lend their support to this new chapter of work of the technology mechanism. Without further ado, I'd like to welcome Mr. Jose Miguel Benavente, head of Chile's Economic Development Agency, to introduce you to the joint work program of the technology mechanism. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, so we are pleased to announce the launch of the joint work program of the technology mechanism of the UNF Capital Space. Parties have agreed and welcomed the first joint work program of the technology mechanism for the 2023-2027 period. This joint program aims to strengthen the current support provided to countries by the Technology Executive Committee, the TEC, and the Climate Technology Center and Network, the CTCN. The new joint work program will support the transformational changes needed to achieve the goals of the Convention and the Paris Agreement. This is by focusing in the ways and mechanisms how technology helps the implementation of the nationally determined contributions, the NDCs. Among them, through technology roadmap, digitalization, national system of innovation, water, energy, food nexus, energy systems, building and infrastructure, business and industry, and technology needs assessments, among others. Together, the TEC and the CTCN will support the acceleration of the deployment of climate technologies for both climate mitigation and adaptation, focusing in the advancement of the transformation that is needed in this area of implementation. Thank you very much. Colette. Thank you, Mr. Benavente, for this introduction. I'm now very pleased to welcome Ms. Inge Anderson, Executive Director, oh, thank, sorry, Executive Director for the United Nations Environment Program, Mr. Simon Steele, Executive Secretary of the United Nations Framework Convention for Climate Change, and the Honorable Mr. John Kerry, Special Presidential Envoy for Climate for the United States. Mr. Kerry, I know you're very pressed for time, so let me invite you to share your remarks first. Thank you to the Special Envoy for this honor to speak in front of you. And to everyone who's here, many, many thanks. And of course, to those on the committee, the Technology Committee, and indeed to you, Mr. Benavente, thank you for reporting and for the hard work and the heavy lifting that has gone on in the Technology Executive Committee to allow us to arrive at this point. I say to you that Technology is important because right now we're not deploying it at the speed with which we must. The emissions gap report tells us that the current policies are taking us to 2.8 degrees in 2100. And with the NDCs, even the conditional ones, to 2.4 degrees. So it is a, a, when we are seeing what we're seeing in Pakistan, when we're seeing what we're seeing in Nigeria, when we're seeing what we're seeing in Horn of Africa, absolutely critical that the technology that we know is available is made available and this is what this work is all about and the joint work program presents us in a way with the very solutions because technology is where solutions are found technology is where we match the challenges with the solutions and the genius of this mechanism which is the other mechanism under the UNFCCC is that is a matching program, a program where technology needs meet 
technology availability. And so in the uh, emissions gap report that we released this year, we spoke to uh, five, but I'm only going to mention four significant shifts that need to happen. And, and here exactly what this work program carries forth are the very technologies to make those shifts happen. One, of course, is the water, energy, and food systems. On the, on the power side, we know that we are accountable on the electricity side for nearly half of all CO2 emissions. And we understand that there are 10% on this good earth, that, uh, that, uh, that there are 10% today who do not have access. And take a country like South Sudan, you're talking 6% who have access to electricity. So technology needs to be made available to the poorest so that they can too live the lives that they have every right to aspire to. And of course, on the food waste side, there are technological solutions, and we understand that if food waste were a country, it would be the third largest emitter. So finding ways and intersecting that with the methane work that you, uh, Special Envoy, has in fact focused on on the methane side is absolutely critical. So the technology needs assessments that have been done are critical, and I am so happy when I see the needs assessment being reflected in the NDCs. That's the integration. But distinguished representatives, ladies and gentlemen, we do have an issue. And I told my friend Simon here that I'm going to mention it again. When we establish mechanism, we cannot just say, UNEF, would you kindly manage it and run with it? But you figure out how to fund it. That's how it is. I'm ringing doorbells for this mechanism but we need to find a sustained budget so that this mechanism can thrive, expand, and be available. It, is, it makes good sense. Countries want this. This is where the solutions are found. So funded already. Let's get it done. Um, as countries are now establishing the, or talking about the Santiago network, let's learn from this technology mechanism, the CTCN. Do not establish it without funding and ensure that it has a clear pathway. Thank you very much. Since I was previously introduced, I am not eager, uh, but I'm delighted to be here with everybody and really happy. Actually, genuinely excited about this. And uh, Inger, thank you for your tremendous work and leadership on this, Simon. Delighted that you're in your new position and uh, that we're going to be continuing to work together. And everybody here, uh, this is it. Changing the systems that change the climate. Now, I don't think any of us here, I, I hope, are so technology-oriented that, that it's the be-all and end-all and we believe that's the beginning and the end. It's not particularly where climate is concerned because of nature-based solutions and because of, you know, things we don't even know yet. But technology is going to help us know what we don't know and try to command the future uh, in a far more effective way. And I love the fact that this lays out a program of work from 2020 to 2027. That's what we need. Organized approach to enormous challenges. And I am uh, very grateful to Simon and Inger for bringing us all together here to make this announcement. The UNFCC technology mechanism delivers smart technology innovation for climate resilience and mitigation, and I would assume also for adaptation. It's going to tell us things that we don't know. It's going to analyze data, and data if you talk to a lot of people in technology, is really one of the keys to being able to gather it, analyze it, and formulate uh, a strategy out of that. It's going to be a critical component of what we're doing. While I am not totally technology dependent, I am technology respectful. And it has brought us extraordinary growth and quality of life and choices that we have uh, in many parts of the world. And it will be, it is, an essential ingredient of our ability to be able to keep the Earth's temperature increased to 1.5 degrees. 
just to understand where we are and what the choices are and what we get for some of the choices we make, that is going to come from our ability to be able to digitalize and harness the energy of technology itself. So I'm pleased to announce, by the way, the United States has been involved in this for a long time, going back to Cancun, and we have one of the folks here who was at Cancun who is now uh, the vice chair of this effort. I want to introduce him, Erwin Rose, sitting over here. Stand up and take a bow because you've been really uh, ex extremely dedicated to this undertaking. And he reminded me tonight that uh, um, I was secretary starting in 2013. He started that effort in 2012, so he was ahead of me. And when I left uh, in uh, 2021, January 20th, another fellow came in, and many people left the department. And Irwin took my advice. I urged people, stay there, help get the job done, steer the department in the right direction. And I'm glad to tell you that uh, Irwin Rose survived four years of Donald Trump, and here he is, folks, still Gary Lodge. So, thank you, man. Uh, so we are cooperating on technology and innovation in developing countries in order to help fulfill the key pledges that we made at COP26. And I'm proud to say that we, we helped to work at the development of this uh, first joint work program for technology, for the Technology Executive Committee and the T Climate Technology Center uh, and Network in support of the Paris Agreement itself and its framework. We remain committed to making certain that the Paris Agreement, uh, that the parties thereto are able to come together and cooperate. And as you may recall, those of you who are in Paris, there was a great deal of focus in mission innovation. Uh, Prime Minister Modi, uh, President uh, Obama and others really came together around this idea early on about what technology can do. And I believe that the work program set out here uh, gives us a strategy to be able to promote the most effective technologies and to be able to put our money where the best return on that investment is going to be. It's absolutely essential that we find the right tools to guide us as we go forward. I remain convinced, and I know this is a little bit controversial, that I spent yesterday, I spent, not yet, well, I can't even remember, yesterday, day before yesterday, Sunday, our supposed day off, I was with Johan Rockström, whom you all know, and Johan, who heads up the Potsdam Institute, has been really one of the foremost thinkers about where we are and where we're going, where the tipping points are, what the interrelationship is. He manages data really effectively, and he's been able to tell us that we're on the brink of a tipping point, maybe five of them. But the Arctic is perhaps one of the most foreboding. And if we are indeed, I mean, the feedback loops that come in aren't completely discernible to the naked imagination and mind. We need to be able to process data. We need to be able to understand these trend lines. But when he described to me what we know about the balance of nature and this potential tipping point of the Arctic, uh, it really is foreboding. On the other hand, he's very clear. 1.5 degrees is the cut point. If we can keep our temperature of the planet from warming at 1.5 degrees, we, w we can win that battle. And I, like I think everybody here, refuse to believe that we've lost that battle or that we can't at this point still win it. The truth is, if we can get a certain group of countries to join the 65% of global economic enterprise that committed in Glasgow to achieve 1.5 degrees, then we keep lowering the, the level that we're at now. IEA said all the promises of Glasgow can keep us at 1.8 degrees. If we make more promises here, then we lower the 1.8 degrees. Well, I got news for you. Mexico has stepped up. Egypt has stepped up. Just today, we announced a jet P with Indonesia, which puts Indonesia on a better track. And so if we keep doing this, 
all of a sudden there are only one or two countries, three countries, outside of the glide path we need to actually make real the words that we are speaking. So thank you for this technology effort. You have absolutely the potential to be able to pull off the, the save of generations if we do what this promises to be able to do. And I, I hope we're going to make every effort in the world. This is our technology pitch, and I thank the UNFCC and Simon that they're committed to it, and the United States is going to do everything we can to meet the mark. Thank you. Ms. Anderson, Mr. Kerry, thank you very much for your insightful remarks, inspiring remarks, and thank you for taking the time to be with us here today. I now have the pleasure of welcoming Mr. Simon Steele. Thank you, thank you, Ina, and my good friend John, Inga, everyone here, everyone involved in this important initiative. Good. Good evening, good evening. So ladies and gentlemen, this new joint work program from the UNFCCC technology mechanism is about one thing, opportunity. The opportunity to unlock the incredible, ri incredibly rich and diverse climate technologies already available throughout the world. The opportunity to bridge the gap between technology policies on the page and implementation on the ground. The opportunity to support NDC ambition by helping countries understand what technologies they need and how they plan to integrate them. Opportunities that will ultimately help us speed up the transformational changes needed to achieve the goal of the Paris Agreement and limiting temperature rise to 1.5 degrees. The IPCC has been absolutely clear. Anything below 1.5, the risks to health, livelihoods, food security, water supply, human security, and economic growth <laughs> paints a very dismal picture. Yet there's also been clear that they've also been clear about the important role of technology in our drive to hold that line at 1.5, highlighting that the costs of several low emission technologies have fallen continuously since 2010, including solar energy, onshore and offshore wind energy, batteries, and the cost viability of renewables. We've seen incredible technological progress across the board but many technologies still face barriers that need to be better understood and addressed before they could be implemented at scale. And developing countries urgently need finance to leverage te technological solutions to enhance ambition and accelerate climate action. This joint work program of the UNFCCC technology mechanism is designed to address these issues and will help bridge the gap between climate technology policy and implementation. We know the power of the technology mechanism. In the last decade, it has provided support to parties to help them break through obstacles ranging from decision-making and prioritization, creating the right enabling environments, and helping countries mobilize the financing they need to reach their climate goals. But for this new era of implementation, a new approach was needed. This new joint work program, which is fully aligned with what the science tells us, will reinvigorate the technology mechanism and make it fit for purpose for this age of implementation. It's focused on high potential sectors and high impact actions, from water, energy, food systems, to sustainable mobility, building and infrastructure, industry, and energy systems. 
it will help facilitate the uptake of available, mature, clean technologies which is still lacking in developing countries, including small island developing states and the least developed countries. And it will unlock the potential of new and emerging technologies that can accelerate system transition that are compatible with the 1.5 degree scenario. So to ensure the full and effective implementation of this joint work program, we need all the support we can get. I thank all parties and partner organizations who have supported the work of the technology mechanism thus far, and I look forward to an exciting journey ahead fueled by this new work program. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. very much, Simon, for sharing progress and highlighting what needs to be done. The work of the technology mechanism would not be possible without the generous contribution of donors. And today, I have the honor of introducing some of the technology mechanism's long-standing donors to take the floor. Let me first turn to Ms. Clara de la Torre, Acting Director General from the European Commission's Directory General for Climate Action. Ms. Clara de la Torre, the floor is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, I am particularly happy to be here this afternoon with you all because we know that innovation and technology are at the source of growth and well-being of our societies. Um, through the, the Climate Technology Center Network and the Technology Executive Committee, um, the technology mechanism plays a crucial role <coughs> excuse me, in advancing the transformation of our societies and move us from policies to implementation. Policies and implementations that have to keep us under 1.5 degrees. The technical assistance, <coughs> excuse me, and capacity building of the CTNC directly supports developing countries and will be extra important, very important during this critical decade where we need to reduce our emissions and to adapt to the effects already there from climate change. So this joint work program has been a great idea because it brings, it not only brings to, thank you very much, it not only brings these two bodies closer to each other, but ensures that we optimize the support to developing countries. This was, as I say, a great idea. Since its creation uh, the, in, in the, the CTNC in 2007, the European Union and its member states have been the largest donors, having contributed over with over $31 million to its past work. But we know that to fully support developing countries, we need not only a more balanced contribution from parties, and it is therefore very good to see more donors coming, but it's also important to see that we have more active, uh, new active uh, partners in this undertaking, such as the multilateral bank and the private sector. I'm very confident that this new work program will trigger more visibility to the work of the technology mechanism and more support which is necessary to achieve our political objectives for the sake of developing countries. In the European Union, we support the CTNC by connecting them with the European Union delegations to collaborate on specific projects or by encouraging collaboration with the Green Climate Fund and with the Global Environment Facility. We see the work of CTNC as an important piece in our broader contribution to climate finance and climate technology. Therefore, I'm very happy and proud to announce that the European Commission will provide 2 million euros support to the new work program 
adding to the already 12 million euros that we have provided today. And some member states are also very actively engaged, and this highlights how the European Union works together through a so-called Team Europe approach in our joint support to the technology mechanism inter alia. This new work program, this new joint work program, comes at the perfect moment. It will lead us collectively into a new phase, more focused toward acute priority areas in developing countries. Technology, innovation, digitalization, should release all their potential to address mitigation and adaptation in a transformative way on the ground. And all this to keep below 1.5 degrees. Therefore, the European Commission and the European Union as a whole will continue to engage as actively as possible for the benefit of our partners in developing countries. So let us continue working together. This is good responsibility and a good opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. De La Torre, for your remarks and for your contribution. Let me extend once again our appreciation to the European Commission for its continued support for this technology mechanism. Now let me turn to Mr. Stefan Bernfeld, Parliamentary uh, Parliamentary State Secretary from the German Federal Ministry for Economic Affairs and Climate Action. Mr. Bentel, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, dear General Secretary, ladies and gentlemen. Technology is essential for both mitigation and adaptation. It is necessary to reach the targets of the Paris Agreement and the Glasgow Climate Pact. In the last, this summer, not in last year, in this summer, we saw dramatic droughts. In Europe, we saw a dry wine, biggest river in my country, a dry Loire in France, a dry Po, biggest river in Italy. We saw a dry Yangtze, biggest river in China. We saw a, saw a drought in California, and on the other hand, we saw floods, like in Pakistan, where a third of the country was, uh, was under flood. So, accelerated and fast deployment of climate technologies is a highly important building block in the set of solutions for transformational change. It's also key to what we want to combine economic development and climate protection. And so Germany supports the technology mechanism and the work of its bodies, the TEC and the CPTN in implementing their joint work program and the targeted sectoral transformation on mitigation and on adaptation. So I'm happy that I can announce that Germany will again provide uh, two million Euro for the CTCN and the TEC, and Germany support the TEC, the CTCN in implementing the joint work program and the targeted sectoral transformation on mitigation and adaptation. Both is necessary, as we see when we see it with droughts and floods. The new joint work program marks an important milestone in the further development for the technology mechanism. So thank you very much for everybody and every organization who contributes to this program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Vento. German's contribution to the technology mechanism is very much appreciated. Now let me introduce Mr. Stephen De Boer, Assistant Deputy Minister, International Affairs Branch for Canada's Environment and Climate Change. Thank you very much and good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to be here to support this launch. I would like to start by noting that the intersection of policy and practice is never more apparent than in the technology space. 
Bringing together both elements of the technology mechanism under one work program will increase cohesion and consistency, helping to accelerate the deployment of clean technologies we need to meet our climate and energy transition objectives. And so, it's truly my pleasure to join you today to announce Canada's contribution of $6 million through our climate finance envelope to renew our support to the CTCN. We have been actively supporting the Centre since its inception and are pleased to see the progression into this new phase of work. We see this new, more collaborative approach to its activities as a clear way to assist developing countries access the critical technologies needed for mitigation and adaptation solutions and seek the cleanest, most efficient and effective paths to achieving their NDCs. In Canada, we understand the essential role that technical assistance and capacity building play in creating the right enabling environments to attract the investments needed to set developing countries up for success. We are therefore proud to support the technology mechanism in delivering this foundational support. We look forward to continuing our work with the CTCN, including through its advisory board and supporting its collaboration with the Technology Executive Committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. De Boer. We welcome Canada's renewed contribution to CTCN. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now approaching the end of our launch event, and before we close, I'd like to invite Ms. Rose Mwebasa. Rose, I don't see you, but uh, there we go, to provide final remarks on behalf of the technology network. Thank you. Um, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, today is a happy day for the technology mechanism under the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Um, the reinforcement of the parties, of the importance of this mechanism by your high level presence and the large numbers with which you have presented yourselves is a, a, a re-emphasis of the commitment we made under the Paris Agreement when you agreed on Article 10 that the technology mechanism would indeed be fundamental to the delivery of the actions that are needed to keep us within the planetary boundaries of 1.5, as Secretary Kerry was saying. And so, um, in a very humble way, I want to deeply thank you as the director of the CTCN for your presence here. I want to thank the parties, not for only successfully concluding the technology negotiations, that's very important, you were all very busy last week, but also for taking this time on this important occasion that would allow us to continue to serve countries. Right now we have projects in over 109 countries and have delivered over 350 technology solutions. This work here would be impossible without you as parties and has been led by the government of Chile as chairs of the Technical Executive Committee supported by the government of Norway and by the government of Kenya as chair of the advisory board and the government of the USA as the vice chair. And I see in this room the wonderful men and women who have poured their hearts out over the last few months working to bring this work to fruition in both developing and developed countries. I am deeply grateful to the Technology Executive Committee members, the members of the advisory board, and to the staff of both the UNFCCC Secretariat and uh, Director Daniele and my colleague Ariesta, and in the CTCN under Inga Anderson, our Executive Director, under whose leadership I serve. As I close, I want to acknowledge several other parties that have continued to support the CTCN whose ministerial heads are not here. I would like to start with the Republic of Japan that in the negotiations announced continued support to the CTCN. The government of the Republic of Korea that continues to support the CTCN. The UK government, the government of Ireland, the government of Sweden, the government of Spain. 
and all the other parties that continue to pour resources into this life-changing institution. I want to thank you all and I wish you a lovely evening. Thank you. Thank you, Rose, for these last words. Your Excellencies, distinguished speakers, thank you very much for your valuable input and for taking the time to be with us today. I now close this event and I wish you successful engagement at this COP. Thank you.